So for me personally, 2019 marked a big milestone in my career. I started working at SEPA 20 years ago last month. So on one hand, thank you. <laughs> on one hand, that makes me feel pretty darn old. But on the other hand, it's really exciting actually to look back and reflect on the amount of change that has happened both within SEPA as an organization, but more importantly, in the industry over the course of those two decades. When I started in 1999, SEPA wasn't the Smart Electric Power Alliance. We started out as the Utility Photovoltaic Group, how's that for a name, UPVG, before later becoming version 1.0 of the SEPA acronym, which was the Solar Electric Power Association. And when I started in 1999, there was no meaningful US grid-connected solar industry, with just a handful of players doing demonstration projects that were almost exclusively funded by federal grant funding. And in 1999, how big do you think a PV system had to be to be considered massive? Any guesses? 3.5. How about 50 kW? Not 50 megawatts. 50 kW in 1999 was considered, considered a massive solar system. In 1999, the average cost for a res residential system was more than $10 a watt. Battery storage was something that was only for off-grid projects. There was only two and a half gigawatts of wind capacity in the US. And wind and solar collectively didn't even register in the EIA's data for US electricity generation resources. Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth hadn't yet put climate change into the public spotlight at all. Because of the hard work by all of you and so many, many others in the industry, all of these things have changed over time. Today, large scale, as you know, large scale solar and wind are the lowest cost resources in many states. Energy storage is becoming a real option. And there is almost 98 gigawatts of wind capacity in the US compared to the two and a half gigawatts in 1999. The overall US electricity generation portfolio has become significantly cleaner, with coal dropping to 27% and renewables increasing to almost 20% in 2018, with even more rapid growth on the horizon. Climate change is officially in the public spotlight with even CNN hosting a seven-hour climate crisis town hall with presidential hopefuls. In addition to serving as the CEO of SEPA, I also serve as the board chair of another fantastic nonprofit called the Clean Energy Leadership Institute, or CELI. CELI is focused on developing the new generation of energy leaders. Last year, I gave a keynote address at the CELI conference, and I told the audience of young professionals this. I told them, you are not the leaders, the future leaders of the clean energy industry. You are the future leaders of the energy industry, which will be clean. It's interesting to note that for young generations, clean energy is not an option, it's an expectation. The cultural battle is being won by the simple reality of new generations with new attitudes. Solar, wind, storage, and other technologies we are all here to talk about this week, are not the alternatives anymore. They are becoming the default. So where do we head from here? SEPA's vision is for a carbon-free energy future by 2050. And based on what we're seeing across the country, we know that many others agree. Carbon-free is the new model. There is increasing momentum from cities, corporations, states, utilities who are making commitments to carbon reduction goals. According to the Sierra Club, one in four people in the US now live in a town, city, or state that has made a commitment to 100% clean energy. Just five months ago, that number was one in five. That is how quickly things are changing here in the US. And we have seen a major trend over the past 10 months in voluntary utility commitments to carbon reduction. This is significant, and it is a true indicator that we have reached a tipping point. The first big utility commitment came from Excel Energy in December last year, but it did not take long before Public Service of New Mexico, PSEG, Madison Gas and Electric, Duke Energy, and others followed suit. 
Today, SEPA has tracked 43 utilities that have made public voluntary commitments to significant carbon reduction. 69% of customers in the US are served by a utility with a publicly announced goal. 15 of those utilities of a variety of sizes and shapes have made commitments that are for a carbon-free or net zero future by 2050 or sooner. If you're interested in seeing what utilities have made voluntary commitments, check out SEPA's Utility Carbon Reduction Tracker tool on our website. And to get real-time updates on new commitments, they're coming fast and furious at this point, to get updates on these new commitments as they're made, make sure to follow SEPA on Twitter or LinkedIn. Now let me be clear, the road to get to a carbon-free future will not be easy. It will take the collective efforts of stakeholders, not just in this room, not just in the US, but globally to be successful. But here, all of us, we need to meet our promises and our commitments so that utilities, corporations, communities, and other governments can meet theirs. We need to get to a clean and modern grid on our path to carbon free. But we have to keep in mind that we can't do that at all costs. We have to do it in a smart, thoughtful way that ensures that we maintain safe, affordable, and reliable electricity for all people. SEPA is here to facilitate this transition to a clean and modern future. We are leading the way in four prioritized areas of focus, what we call the SEPA pathways. These pathways are around utility business models, regulatory innovation, grid integration, and transportation electrification. I hope that all of you will join us very early tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., for our general session, which will be a deep dive on one of these pathways, a very important one, regulatory innovation. SEPA's Janet Gale Besser will lead a discussion with three state commissioners about the innovation happening in their states and their observations on what's needed across the country. To learn more about SEPA's work across all four of these pathways and how we can help you and your organization, please come see us at our booth this week or visit us on our website. Thank you to all of you for everything you're doing to drive us towards a carbon-free energy future. Thank you.